Hey guys, it's Tiffany. Today I'm going to show you how to add and subtract radicals that have variables in them. Adding and subtracting radicals with variables. Some things I want you to take note of. You can only add or subtract radicals when they have the same numbers as radicands. In the example, the cube root of 216, the number 216 is the radicand. So whenever I refer to the word radicand, I'm talking about the number that's underneath the radical. You should treat any variable the same way you would a whole number that is a radicand. Sometimes you'll need to simplify a radical in order to add or subtract. Let's take a look at example number one. Let's say I need to simplify 8 square root 2y plus the square root of 2y. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is pull out anything from under the radical that I can. And when I look at this particular example, I can see that I can't pull anything out. I can't break 2 down any further because it's already primed. And I can't break y down any further. When it's time to add radicals, I must have the same thing under the radicand. So for our first term, I have the square root of 2y. And for my second term, I have the square root of 2y. So that means we are able to add here, okay? When I look at these two terms, I can see that my first term has a coefficient of 8. And I can see that my second term does not have any written coefficient, and that means there's an understood one right here. So if you want, you can write a one if that will help you out, okay? So now this is just like adding anything with variables. It's like combining like terms, okay? This is like saying I have the problem 8x and I wanna add 1x to it, or that could also look like 8x plus x, okay? But the thing is, I'm not dealing with x's, I'm dealing with the square root of two y's, okay? So really what my problem is, is eight square root two y plus one square root two y. So now I'm gonna combine these terms and I have my eight plus my one and that gives me nine square root two y. So the answer to example number one is nine square root two y. Let's take a look at example number two. Example number two is nine square root 64x plus 14 square root 36x. Well, if you remember, whenever we're pulling numbers out from under the radical or simplifying radicals, you basically break down your whole numbers that you see that are underneath the radical. And normally I would find the prime factors of that the only thing about 64 is it's a great number because it's a perfect square. So this first term could be written as 9 square root 8 times 8x. If you remember, when we're pulling out from underneath the radical, we're looking for groups of whatever our index is. The index is the number that's written right here in the little like check mark area of our radical. Okay, so when there's nothing written there, that means it's an understood 2 or or we're reversing an exponent of two, okay? So we're looking for groups of two. So the eight times eight is our group of two. So I'm gonna circle those and I can pull that out. So now I have nine times eight square root X. The X is left over because there's no partner to go with it to come out. The X just remains under the radical when I rewrite it. So now I multiply the two numbers that are outside. Whatever you take out from under a radical gets multiplied with whatever is outside there. So nine times eight is 72 and that's square root X. So I've simplified the first term of my example. Now let's deal with the second term, okay? I have 14 square root 36 and ooh, we're, we lucked out here because 36 is a perfect square again. So we had two perfect squares in this particular problem. So that means I can rewrite 36 as six times six and leave my X underneath there. Now I'm gonna pull out the six. So I have 14 times six square root X. Now 14 times six 
is 84. And then my radical of X just remains the same because I can't pull anything out. Now, if you remember, there was a plus sign in between these two problems, so I need to leave a plus sign there. And now I can combine these two terms because everything after my whole number is the same. So this is just like adding variables, like I explained. We're like combining like terms, okay? So this problem is 72 plus 84. And when I add those two together, I get 156. And my square root X remains the same. So the answer to example number two is 156 square root X. Let's take a look at example number three. Example number three. I have three square root 90 X to the fifth power minus four square root 100 X to the sixth power. Okay, now we're dealing with multiple variables. Okay, so this is a little different. So I have two things I'm gonna be breaking down now. I'm gonna be breaking down my number using prime factorization, unless I see some perfect squares in there that I can pull out quickly. And I'm gonna be breaking down my variable, okay? So if I have 90, I can know I can break that down into nine times 10. Ooh, nine's a perfect square, I like that, right? Because I know if I just leave the nine under the radical by itself, I can pull out a three, right? Because that means three times three. So it's kind of like I get to skip a step if I want. And then 10 breaks down into two times five. I'm gonna start rewriting what I have figured out. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and still write three times three underneath my radical because I know sometimes people don't understand where my numbers come from if I skip a step. So I don't like to do it a whole, whole lot. So this is two times three times three times five. If you don't have to do all this, like because you get it and you chose to write, I'm gonna put it up here, three square root two times five times nine, that is perfectly fine, okay? That's like saying, hey, I don't need to break everything down. I know a little bit of something, I can do this. Um, and this nine turns into a three out here, right? Well, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just taking the time to break the nine all the way down to its prime factors, okay? So what I'm gonna do is group my threes and then take it out. So it'll be three times three square root of everything else that's left over. So it's the same process. I'm just not skipping the step. I'm showing people where it would come from, okay? So two and five are left under the radical and they are 10 when you multiply them together, okay? But if you remember, I didn't only have a number underneath the radical, I also had X to the fifth power. So what that means is really, this first line, I did not complete. I need to write five X's. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. I need to also group those just like I grouped my three right here. I need to also group my X's so I can get these, I can get these, and then there's one left over. So as far as when I rewrite on this next step, I'm actually gonna cross this out and I'm gonna rewrite it with not only just my whole numbers, which was the three times the three, because I had a three on the outside already, plus the three that I grouped right here. I'm also gonna include my X's now, because I have to make sure I pull my variables out just like I pull my whole numbers out, okay? So this leaves me with three times three times X times X. So that means anything that did not have a partner, and I'm gonna circle those items in green, remains under the radical, okay? So two was something that didn't have a partner, five was something that didn't have a partner, and X didn't have a partner. So now I'm gonna multiply all these things together so that I can have a finalized number for just this first term. Three times three is nine. X times X, what is that? X squared, okay? And then the square root of two times the five is 10. And then there's just a regular X. So the original first term that I had right here, it was three square root 90 X to the fifth can be simplified or rewritten as nine 
x squared square root 10x. Now it's time for me to deal with my second term. Okay, I'm gonna follow the exact same steps. I'm gonna break it down. Well, I'm looking at it and I realize that I have a 100 and I'm like, ooh yeah, because I know 100 is a perfect square. So I could rewrite this first term as four square root of 10 times 10, okay? And then I have six X's, so that means X, 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 let's see, yep. Now, if the 10 times 10 is not enough for you, you could break it all the way down into two twos and two fives, and that would get you 100 as well. Like if you multiply two times two, you would get four. And if you multiplied five times five, you'd get 25. So four times 25 is 100, okay? So you could pull out the group of two and the group of fives and you'd be in the exact same situation. I'm basically assuming that you're starting to get it a little bit. So I'm kind of like just explaining it verbally this time. Now, I can take out a 10 because I have a pair of 10s. I can take out one X, two X, three X's, okay? So outside of my radical is gonna look like four times 10. And then I need to pull out one X, two X, three X. And guess what? My radical actually goes away this time because there's nothing left over to consider, okay? This is very possible. This can happen. It happens all the time. You're pulling the stuff out of your radical and guess what? Your radical drops away because everything was able to come out. Now I'm gonna multiply all of this together, okay? Everything here to simplify this as much as possible. And I'm left with 40 X to the third power. And if you remember at the beginning of the problem, there was a subtraction sign in between these two terms, okay? Now just for clarification, this nine X squared square root 10 X came from my very first term here that I put a rectangle around. Then my 40 X to the third power came from this term, which I'm now putting a rectangle around as well, okay? So now I can subtract if I'm able to. And after looking at this particular problem, I can see that I'm not able to. And the reason for that is because I don't have common radicands or common variables at the end, okay? My first term has the square root of 10 X. My second term has just 40 X to the third power. These are not common terms. These are not like terms, so I can't combine them, okay? I can just rewrite them, circle them, and say, this is my final answer for example number three. So, let's see what that's gonna look like. Nine X squared square root 10 X minus 40 X to the third power or cubed, however you wanna think of it, is my final answer for example number three. Let's take a look at example number four. Example number four. So when you look at this, you might think, whoa, it looks like quite a lot but it's really not that bad, okay? I'm gonna follow the exact same steps as I've been following all along. I'm gonna say, look at my whole numbers underneath the radicals and break those down and pull out everything that I can pull out. Then I'm gonna do the same thing for my variables, break them down. That means instead of an X to the fifth power, I'm gonna write five X's and then circle groups of two because I'm taking the square root. So let's go ahead and begin. My first number I'm gonna break down is my 150. 150 can be broken down into 10 times 15. That's two times five and then three times five. And as you can see, just starting off, that's not really that bad, okay? So I'm gonna rewrite this first term. Remember, first term means this first part all the way up to the plus sign. I'm gonna rewrite it, but instead of writing the 150, I'm gonna write the prime factors of it. So 20 y squared square root of two times three times five times five. And then I need to extend this line because I need to incorporate all these X's and all these Y's. This is telling me I have five X's. So I'm gonna write X times X times X times X times X. And then I'm gonna write three Y's times Y times Y times Y, okay? 
Now I'm going to group them by twos, okay? So I got a, a pair of fives here, two X's here, two X's here, and two Y's, all right? Now I'm going to pull all this out, and I'm going to be left with 20 Y squared times 5 times X times X times Y. Now everything that's left over stays underneath my radical. So I have a two times three times X times Y. Now I'm gonna rewrite all of this, except I'm going to multiply the numbers out so they're not left spread out as factors, okay? So this is 20, and then I have another whole number of five. So I need to multiply those together because they're both outside of the radical now. So I'm left with 100 here. And then I have a Y squared and I have another Y over here. Well, when you're multiplying variables, whenever you multiply another one by one, basically you just increase the exponent. So this becomes Y to the third. Okay, so I've used my 20, I've used my Y to the second power, I've used my five and I've used my regular Y. And then X times X equals X squared. Now, as far as underneath the radical, I'm gonna simplify those things and I have two times three, which is six, and then x, y cannot be simplified, so I just write them down. Now, this term that I just wrote down, all of that is gonna be added to something else. I need to calculate what that something else is. Well, let me start off by breaking down my 54, okay? So let's say I have 54, and I break it down into six times nine, and then that is two times three, and some people may be at the place where they feel comfortable with leaving a nine under the radical, and they know that a three comes from that, but some people may not be, so I'm writing it, so it's three times three for the nine. So now I'm gonna rewrite this as two x, square root of two times three times three times three. And then I got a whole bunch of X's to write out and a whole bunch of sevens. So X, 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 got those three. Now, how many Y's? Seven, how do I know? Because this exponent right here tells me. Y times Y times Y times Y times Y times Y. Okay, now I'm gonna group them in twos. Here's a group of two, here's a group of two, here's a group of two. Here's a group of two, here's a group of two, okay? Two X times three times X times Y times Y times Y, okay? And then all of the other numbers that did not get taken out get left under the radical, okay? So I got a two, a three, an X, and a Y. Two, three, X, Y. Now I'm gonna multiply everything together that can be multiplied. And I'm gonna write that answer next to the plus sign. I got a whole number of a two and a three, and that gives me six. I got an X here and an X here. That gives me X squared. Then I have a Y, Y, and Y. And that is a Y to the third power. And then I have square root six X Y. Now I'm comparing my two numbers to see if I can combine them, if I can add them. And when I look at it, I can see that I wrote my variables in different orders, okay? So on this first one, it's 100 Y to the third power X squared. And on the second one, it's six X squared Y to the third power. So that's the same thing. And then I'm looking under my radical. I can see I have 6xy and 6xy. Well, guess what? These have the same variables, and that means that I can add, okay? Now, if it helps, you can rewrite this in the correct order, and I'll do that right now. Okay, so that ends up being x squared, y to the third. I just switched the order so they look the same. So I have x squared, Watch the third and over here. So what this is basically saying is that I have two whole numbers to add and then everything after the whole number is basically just gonna get tagged on. So I got 100 and then plus, that comes from this, six. What does that equal? 106. Then everything after my whole numbers remains the same. So x squared y to the third square root six xy. 106 x squared y to the third square root 6xy is my answer to example number four.
Let's take a look at example number five. Example number five. I have another one. It looks like a lot, but I don't think it's going to be that bad. I can see that I have a 25 here. That's a perfect square. So that comes out pretty easily. And 98. I can break that down pretty easily. That's not that bad. Okay. So 10 y squared square root of 5 times 5. X, 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 X. And then I have five Y's. One, two, three, four, five. And if you note, most of the times I have been putting a little dot in between each um, whole number or variable just to clarify multiplication. But hopefully you get that it's multiplication by now. Uh, if you're still not so comfortable with it, I would advise you continue to write those. But I'm not going to write them because I know any two numbers touching like this, I'm talking about multiplying them, okay? Now I'm going to circle things in pairs and pull out what I get, a five, x, x, y, y. Okay, pull all that out. 10 y squared times five times x times x times y times y. The only thing that's left under my radical is a y. Now, let's do the same thing over here. I have the number 98. So for a number like this, you might say something like, well, I don't know what can go into 98 evenly, but I do know it's even because it ends with an eight. So I will at least divide it by two. And then I can write down a 49 because it's two times 49 that gives you 98. 49 is a perfect square. That means I can break it down into the same two terms and that's seven times seven, okay? Now, because I have the prime factors of 98, I'm gonna go ahead and write all of that underneath minus 11x, the square root of two times seven times seven, x, 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 and then y, 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 okay? Now, I'm gonna circle pairs. I have a pair of sevens, I have a pair of x's, x's, y, 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 okay? Now, I'm gonna pull all of this out, and the only thing that's gonna be left on the radical is the square root of two, okay? So I have 11x times seven times x times x times y times y times y. The square root of two. Now I'm gonna multiply everything that I can. I have 11 times seven and that's 77. And then I have three x's, one, two, three. So that's x to the third power and three y's. So that's y to the third power square root of two. Okay, and I never simplified this first one, so let me go ahead and do that right now. Two, I got a 10 and a five, and that gives me 50. And then I have a y squared, and I have some more y's over here. So that gives me y to the fourth. And then I have two x's, x squared, square root of y. Okay, and that's minus all of this that's over here, which ended up being 77x to the third, y to the third, square root of two. Now, when I'm looking at this problem, I can see that I don't have the same numbers under my radical, meaning I don't have the same radicands, and nothing else really looks too much the same, so I can't combine this anymore. I can't simplify this problem any more than what it is right now. So that means the answer to example number five is everything that I just circled. Let's take a look at example number six. Example number six. Example number six wants us to simplify these three radicals, okay? We got negative five square root three y squared plus the square root of 84 x squared minus the square root of 42 x squared. So the first thing I'm gonna do is the same thing I've done all along and I'm going to calculate the prime factors of any number under the radical that is not already in its prime factored state. So three is already prime. 84 is not prime. It needs to be broken down, okay? So I'm gonna write my 84 and I'm like, I don't know what that can be broken down into, but I know 84 is even, so I know at least two can go into it. And that would give me 42 that I would need to multiply by the two to get the 84. And then I'm gonna break 42 down into six times seven, and then two times three, okay? So instead of 
the square root of 84 x squared that one's going to end up being 2 times 2 times 3 times 7 okay now the 42 we really just calculated the prime factors of it because it was right here you see that so we really already broke it down and so it's going to be 2 times 3 times 7 so that ended up being sort of like a shortcut okay so 2 times 3 times 7 now I haven't written my variables yet but I was just writing my prime factors um, just to help me out real quick now I'm gonna rewrite this whole thing except I'm gonna write out all of my variables however many times I need to see them so if the exponents 2 in fact all three of these have an exponent of 2 I'm gonna write all three variables twice underneath their radical so this is negative 5 square root of 3 y y plus the square root of 2 times 2 times 3 times 7 x x and these are multiplied together and then minus the square root of 2 times 3 times 7 x x okay and remember I'm pulling out groups of 2 because we're dealing with square roots I have a y that I can pull out I have a 2 that I can pull out I have an x that I can pull out and I have an x that I can pull out okay so now I see that I have negative 5y square root of 3 I write the square root of 3 because it's what's left over underneath the radical and then I add that to 2x those are my two things that could come out square root 21 I got 21 because I multiply the 3 and the 7 together I'm gonna subtract that from 2 times 3 times 7 cannot come out from under my radical so now I've written the 42 under my radical and I can see that I have a pair of X's so the X can come out I'm gonna squeeze that in right here so now I'm looking at my radicals or my radicands the number underneath the radicals to see if any of them are the same and they're not that means I won't be able to add and subtract these I can only add and subtract when the radicand meaning the number under the radical is the same now I'm gonna rewrite this just to make sure it looks a little more clear I have negative 5 y square root 3 plus 2 X square root 21 minus X square root 42 so the answer to example number six is that let's take a look at example number seven example number seven wants us to simplify the problem that you see here 18 square root of x to the fourth y to the seventh plus 6x square root x to the second y to the seventh okay now one thing that's different about this particular problem is that underneath the radical is only variables there's no whole numbers at all okay so I'm gonna rewrite this and it's actually gonna be a little bit easier because I'm not gonna have to calculate the prime factorization of any number because I only have like letters to write down I have one two three four one two three four five six seven and then six x square root of x x one two three four five six seven okay group twos here's a two 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 and then as far as this one goes, here's a group of two, group of two, group of two, group of two. Okay. Pull everything out I can. I have 18 and then I have X, X, Y, 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 square root of Y plus 6X. I got another X to pull out. There's a Y, a Y, a Y, square root Y. Now I'm going to combine all of these variables and just basically give them some exponents. Okay, I have 18x squared y to the third square root y plus 6x squared y to the third square root y. How about that? If you look, you can see that all of our variables and everything under the radical, they all look the same. I have x squared y to the third square root y. And then I have x squared y to the third square root y. How about that? So now I can do this operation. And in this case, the operation is addition. So 18, which came from here, plus 6. What is that? 24. 
and then everything else just gets added on to the end. X squared, Y to the third, square root Y. So the answer to example number seven is 24X squared, Y to the third, square root Y. Now let's take a look at our final example, example number eight. All right, same thing. We have a whole bunch of variables underneath the radical and no numbers underneath our radical, no whole numbers, okay? And we also introduce a third variable. We have a Z this time. You're gonna follow the same procedures. You just have more variables and you have no numbers, okay? And it's actually a whole lot easier to break this down when I'm dealing with variables only underneath the radical because I don't have to calculate the prime factorization of any number. I don't have to break any number down. I can just like write a bunch of letters of the alphabet and it's gonna be pretty easy. So I have X, 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 Y, 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 Z, Z. Let's make sure I did that right. Okay, four X's, one, two, three, four, five Y's, one, two, three, four, five, two Z's, perfect. And then I'm gonna add that to four X, 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 one, two, three, four, five Y's, and one, two, three Z's, okay? So I circled my groups of twos. I have two groups of X's, two groups of Y's, and a group of Z. Then over here, same thing. I got X's, Y, Y, and the Z. Let's see, I got seven X, X, Y, Y, Z. And I do have one Y left over right here. So I do need to continue to write my radical but just put that one Y underneath it. And then I'm gonna add that to four X and then I have another X, Y, Y, Z. And then I have this Y left and I have this Z left, Y, Z. Okay, now I'm gonna write square root and everything. So I have seven X squared, Y squared, Z square root Y plus four X squared, Y squared, Z square root y z okay as you can see our variables aren't the same our radicands aren't the same so i cannot combine these terms so that means the answer to example number eight is 7x squared y squared z square root y plus 4x squared y squared z the square root of y z now let's take a recap. You can only add or subtract radicals when they have the same number as radicands. In the example, the cube root of 216, the number 216 is the radicand. You should treat any variables the same way you would a whole number that is a radicand. Sometimes you will need to simplify a radical in order to add or subtract. Now you try. Comment with the correct answer below, then head over to my website and click on video answers to see if your answer is correct. The problem is 15x square root 16x to the third minus 10 square root 36x to the fifth power. SuperEasyMath.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Did you find this video helpful? You can support this channel by donating to Super Easy Math through PayPal. There's a link to it in the description section below this video and on the Super Easy Math YouTube cover photo.